Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. In this short episode, I'll be summarizing the metabolic fates of acetyl-CoA. More specifically, I'll be comparing the fed state against the fasting state and how each triggers specific metabolic pathways, specific hormones, and specific products. In short, by the end of this presentation, you should have a good handle on the events that lead to acetyl-CoA being diverted into different metabolic pathways and the consequences this has on the metabolism. Okay, let's get started. Before we begin, let's just have a quick recap on how acetyl-CoA is produced from the catabolic breakdown of proteins, carbohydrates and fats. Proteins are digested within the GI tract to give amino acids. These amino acids are subsequently transported to the liver. Here they undergo further catabolic breakdown leading to the extraction of their carbon skeleton. The glucogenic amino acids such as alanine give pyruvate which in turn is decarboxylated to give acetyl-CoA. While this stands true for glucogenic amino acids, Ketogenic amino acids such as leucine produce acetyl-CoA without the need to go through pyruvate. Stored fats undergo lipolysis during times of need, releasing fatty acids which enter into beta-oxidation producing large amounts of acetyl-CoA. Finally, we have the catabolic breakdown of carbohydrates which ultimately lead to the release of glucose and its subsequent utilization within glycolysis to give pyruvate followed by its decarboxylation to give acetyl-CoA. Like three streams joining to form a raging river, all these three macronutrients are destined in the production of acetyl-CoA. Based on this, it's not surprising that acetyl-CoA is also known as the common intermediate of the metabolism. What happens next to this common intermediate sets the theme to this presentation. Let's first tackle the most familiar fate of acetyl-CoA, namely the entry of acetyl-CoA into the common metabolic pathway, which is made up of the citric acid cycle, electron transport chain, and oxidative phosphorylation. This ultimately leads to the formation of ATP and occurs in the mitochondria of cells. The ATP is then used for a variety of purposes including muscle contraction, active transport, while also acting as a fuel source for anabolic pathways such as lipogenesis. While entry of acetyl-CoA into the common metabolic pathway occurs virtually under all circumstances, it is especially high during moderate to high levels of physical activity. When aerobic respiration still dominates ATP production, Okay, let's now look at a second fate for acetyl-CoA, and more specifically the anabolic process known as lipogenesis, which occurs during the fed state and leads to the formation of fatty acids, which are subsequently converted into triacylglycerols, also known as TAGs. As stated, lipogenesis occurs during the fed state and is especially rampant if carbohydrate intake is very high. The presence of elevated levels of glucose within the small intestine stimulates the release of the incretin hormones, which are responsible for insulin being secreted by the pancreas. Rising levels of insulin stimulates the production of the enzyme known as acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which activates lipogenesis and the production of fatty acids. This is sometimes termed the commitment step. In addition to lipogenesis, insulin also stimulates cholesterol synthesis and the production of cholesterol within the liver through the expression of the enzyme known as HMG reductase. This enzyme plays a central role in the rate-limiting step to cholesterol synthesis and helps to explain why cholesterol-lowering drugs known as statins assist in lowering cholesterol levels as they act as a competitive inhibitor to this enzyme. The last two examples have highlighted the fate of acetyl-CoA during the fed state. Let us now focus on the fasting state. During prolonged fasting, the body turns to stored fats and fatty acids as the major energy source to the tissues. Under the action of the hormone known as glucagon, fatty acids enter into beta-oxidation to release large amounts of acetyl-CoA 
which are then diverted into a new metabolic pathway known as ketogenesis, which produce ketones. These ketones then become the major energy source for the brain. So in short, this presentation highlights one, two, three, and four potential fates for acetyl-CoA, dependent on the needs of the body. It also highlights the two major hormones and their action both in the fed and fasting state. I hope you found this presentation to be useful. Thank you for listening.